Let's do it. It's time for the 15 minute NFL pregame show. You don't need all the other jive. You just need the final scores. Who's going to play well? Who's going to lead his team to victory? Let's get into all of it. Just turn away if you don't want your Sunday spoiled because me and Spaghetti and Hench are about to spoil all the finals for you. Here we go. Let's start it off with the team we're buzzing the most about here. The Baltimore Ravens, the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys at home at the time of this recording. An underdog. Plus 148 and a half is the total. I say Cowboys get it in a shootout. 38 to 35. Derrick Henry over 70 yards. Plus 105. I think this is going to be a game that asserts who the Ravens are supposed to be the rest of this season. That is trying to hammer teams. They didn't do that against the Raiders in the fourth quarter there. It is legitimately a problem that they have no pass rush there. The offensive line ain't great. Otherwise, anyway, I'm saying Derrick Henry plus 105 over 70 yards, four to one. If he goes over a hundred yards, I have an instinct about that. Hench, I'll say you. Um, you know, the Cowboys have given up 92 points in their last two home games between the Packer blowout loss in the playoffs and the and the shellacking that the Saints put on them. As I warned everybody, stay away from that Saints-Cowboys teaser. Like, don't put – the Saints are good and the Cowboys may be shaky. And so this week, I think the Ravens get up 10 points again, but don't blow it. I like the Ravens 30-20. to 20. Um, that it could be crisis time in big D. Well, even more so in Baltimore, if they wind up 0-3. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? I'm I'm thinking the Ravens in this one, Um, kind of what Hench was talking about, the defense of the Cowboys, just untrustworthy. They're just too banged up on defense. I know Jake Ferguson may come back, but now you're going to lose CeeDee Lamb. Uh, I just don't love that. I think the Ravens, I, I did watch those games, obviously a miserable loss to the Raiders, but they have played well in, in certain regards. And I, I think the game versus the Chiefs too, like we talked about last week, if Isaiah likely has a smaller foot, they win that game. We feel differently about them. I still like their roster. I think they're going to win this one. There will be trouble in Big D. All right, next up, Texans, Vikings, Vikings, a surprise to many. Another one I was right about. Looks like they're going to go over that five and a half season win total. Um, like I told you, right now, the Vikings are plus two up in one of those two twin cities. Total 46, O'Connell v. Slowick, a.k.a. McVeigh v. Shanny. That is basically all of pro football, if you haven't noticed right now. It's one of those two guys or one of their disciples leading the way. I say the Texans get it 24 to 20. C.J. Stroud, longest pass of the game, over 23 and a half, pays out at plus 115. I find this intriguing because Sam Darnold, biggest pass going over 20 and a half, minus 135. I like the Stroud play a little bit better. Hench, how say you? Uh, I am, or we're, we're almost touching in this garage. I have the Texans 27-20. You know, uh, two things about the Texans. We we're pretty clear in that victory over the Bears. That pass rush gets after it, seven sacks, and I think they're going to pressure Darnold. And then I do think Nico Collins is making the leap into that next elite level. You know, those guys who run that, like, little skinny post where you're like, oh, he's just open because he's fast and big. Like, what? Like where do you – you know, when you're the small corner, you're like, how do you get around this guy? And so I, I think that, that you know, Nico Collins, you know, rising in the rankings, obviously, as a wide receiver, but also, you know, definitively becoming Stroud's guy. Like, Dell and Diggs are the afterthoughts. And and I, I think that uh, we see that hookup uh, leading the Texans to 3-0. and oh, The Bears didn't look so good themselves. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? I have the Texans covering this one. I, I do think the Vikings are kind of due for a loss. They are playing above uh, their pay grade. I, I'm not sure. I buy into Sam Donald being better than we thought he was with the Jets, but I don't think he's going to be a top half of the league quarterback here. Um, you know, Aaron Jones had a nice week one, week two, not really much to be seen uh, versus the Niners there. And I think the, everyone outside of Justin Jefferson hasn't really gotten involved. Uh, I also think with the Texans, you know, a lot of talk this offseason was, you know, MVP candidacy for CJ Stroud, the receivers, you know, Tank Dell, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, bring him in. No one really talked about uh, Joe Mixon. And Joe Mixon has been, in my opinion, the biggest factor for this Texans team. They can grind and pound with him. He's looked fantastic for, uh, for the start of the season. So I like the Texans. Texans to cover and win this one. 
Next up, Eagles and the Saints. Saints at home. They are the surprise so far of the season in a positive way, at least. Uh, laying three to the visiting Eagles. 49 and a half is the total. I say the Saints get it. 26 25. That means I'm leaning to the Eagles, of course. And I'm leaning towards Hertz to go over 40 and a half rush yards. Derek Carr's even money to throw two touchdown passes. I think I like that play. And your spaghetti special, Derek Carr, over one and a half rush yards. Sweet, right? Hench, how say you? Well, I, I actually, I like the Saints 24-20. I like them to cover, um, you know, I think in in b- both the victory over the Packers and the loss to the Falcons, the Eagles' limitations are being exposed. They're obviously much more severe without A.J. Brown. Um, you know, they, they, did, they were not impressive. Saquon was impressive, but when Jalen Hurts, like, rolls out, if he doesn't take off and make it happen with his feet, like I can't imagine what his stats are out of the pocket. Like he doesn't complete a pass that, that, that play never produces positive yardage. Um, I, I think these are two teams going in opposite directions. Um, I had that Sunday morning decision between James Connor and Alvin Kamara, and I got it wrong. I won't get it wrong this Sunday. <laughs> Alvin Kamara will not be on my bench. And uh, he has another nice game as the Saints win. Eddie Spaghetti. Yeah, I'm going to go against the Eagles here. I have the Saints winning and covering in this one, which I'm shocked because I was pretty high in the Eagles coming into the season. But yeah, their their defense is not where I want it to be. And I think the loss of A.J. Brown, who's still not practicing, is massive for them. I think if they could, you know, remove Devontae Smith as much as they can out of this game, it should be, you know, smooth sailing for the Saints here. I think the Saints spreading the ball around. Rashid Shahid's become a factor, which is great for them, which is great for Chris Olave and Alvin Kamara. We keep kind of counting him off like, oh, he's injured. His career is probably finished. And nope, he comes in strong and he's running the ball like a like a beast right now so Derek Carr good for you <clears throat> turning this team around Saints win and cover I think you lean on Saquon if you're Sirianni and company the issue though is boy first of all it immediately now week three of his career with Philadelphia it feels like Saquon's got to prove something to the fan base and and the local media and otherwise to shake off the big drop on Monday night and Sirianni it feels like could get fired if they lose a game or two here that he could be out the door ton of pressure on the Eagles and now they're dependent on a young defense to rise up and 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 solve their end of things man I don't know I I I think it's tight I think they put up I'm Practically speaking, if you do lean on Saquon, you should be two and zero right now. If you're, I, I know they threw the ball to Saquon, but they were too cute. They could, they should have. They were too cute by a half, or what, what's the cliche? Hench. There's Either no, way, there's no defense for putting the ball in the air there. Okay, you look at all the mathematical probabilities, and obviously on third and three, the way Saquon's running the ball, you've got a good shot of just getting the first yeah. down. The game's over. Then you have the possibility of getting two and a half yards and it's fourth and a foot and the game's probably over because you're, you're going to push it over the, over the first down marker. And then the third option is you kick the field goal with 57 seconds left on the clock. Like there really were no terrible options. If you ran the ball now, you know, Sirianni would argue, well, look, the guy's got to be able to catch that pass, but it's like, right. But if he doesn't, here's where you're left. You know, this is why this is why you you do. And it's not even conservative to run the ball there. It's not conservative. It's smart. Uh, your O-line is is the best part of your team. And uh, Saquon's running, running really well. So that was so that's the kind of thing where and I know like somebody comes up with a play call, goes through the head coach's headset, whatever. Um, but that's one like Pete Carroll, where you have to go. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. Hand the ball off. Um, I didn't think it was that crazy, but okay. I will I, say, I, I, obviously, the best player has to catch the ball in that spot. As, so, but but I I hear your point. As a Giants fan, drops in the last three years. 16. I was gonna just gonna say, go go search Saquon Barkley's name online. You'll see in clutch moments he does not make the crucial catch. In fact, last year actually gave up a pick six because he tossed the ball in the air. He's not good in these roles. But yet he's always hated you, Saquon. He was just pretending all this time. Next up, Niners, Rams. Now we actually do have Shanny v. McVay. We know Shanny has largely come out on top here. The Rams at home, plus seven. You know why, if you've been following this pro football season. Injuries, a plague. 44 and a half is the total at the time of this recording. I know what I just said about Shanny over McVay. I say the Niners, 29 to 13 Brock Purdy this is something I'm now tracking as of eight days ago Brock Purdy 
goes over 232 pass yards pretty much every single week. This week, 226 and a half is uh, is the standard. If you want to raise it up, juice it up 245 and a half, you get a payout of plus 130. I also think after what happened in one of those two Twin Cities last week, I think this is the Brandon IU game. Enough's enough. It's taken him a minute to get up to speed. I think now they target him a little bit more and showcase him. Plus 105 if he gets in the end zone. If you really want to get... You know, some some living, not just surviving. Two touchdowns from Brandon Ayuk, seven to one. Hench, how say you? Um, you know, it's, it, you if you watched opening night against the Lions, the Rams looked pretty good, and you could see all the problems they were going to present with those two receivers. Then uh, Nakua goes down, and like a boxer fighting one handed after an injury, it was like every ball is going to Cooper Cup. They're like, okay. You still hung pretty tough. You still move the ball with one arm and then, and then cup goes down and it's like that you, you, it's just impossible to overcome, not just your two best receivers, but two elite top 10 receivers uh, with a, with a great quarterback. So, so this is a nightmare obviously for McVay. And, and I think the Niners coming off a loss, get right 30 to 17. Eddie Spaghetti. Well, I will be in attendance at this game, and I think it's oh. going to be basically a home game for the 49ers in SoFi, uh, unfortunately, for the Rams. I, I do. He, I have heard some whispers that Cooper Cup will go on the IR when they have available spots there because injury is not a quick return injury, so that's not great for them. Um, the injury is the name of the game here, and I, I do agree with you, Shaq. I think Brandon Ayuk will uh, – he kind of talked about in the media, too, that he's just kind of getting up to speed now. I love, obviously, Jordan Mason having over a five yards per carry is ridiculous. And then I love what the uh, the Niners have been doing on offense, spreading the ball around the target share, whether it's Juwan Jennings, Kill, Ayuk, Jusek's getting involved, obviously Debo as well. Um, they could beat you in multiple different ways. They're, they're going to win and cover this game. The Lions are paying a visit to the desert. The Cardinals at home plus three. A lot of people very enthused about what the Cardinals look like so far this season. Total right now is 51 and a half. I think this does present as your fun game of the week. But I also think the Lions ain't much fun. I think they're going to bludgeon the Cardinals, go in there and beat them 31 to 22. I mean, physically, not on the scoreboard necessarily. Jameer Gibbs, um, over 55 and a half rush yards, pays out a plus 130. Montgomery, two touchdowns, plays. I got to stay away from those two touchdown and three touchdown tabs. They, they, they uh, seduce me, and that's not necessarily a good thing to be looking at, but either way. Okay. Montgomery, two touchdowns plus four fifty. Kyler over one and a half touchdown passes plus one ten. Hench, how say you? Uh, I loved both these teams coming into the season and I still love one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that team is the Cardinals. I, I really like the Cardinals uh, to surprise this year. So Do you want to take a mulligan here and now? I'll allow it two weeks in. Do you want to put them into the playoffs? The Rams. I, I do want to. I'm going to be a gentleman. The playoffs, and I do. I do want a refund on my Lions uh, plus fourteen hundred Super Bowl champion bet. I I don't. Mm. Goff is 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 golfing. I mean, you know, I, I'm his biggest defender, and um, he's you know why you know, I don't know why he's walking off the field so much with that hangdog look. Uh, after they failed to get a first down, uh, whereas Kyler, obviously Marvin Harrison emerging, um, Connor running the hell out of the ball. I, I just I like the Cardinals 30 to 20 against a, a, a Lions team that I overrated. Basically doing to the Lions what the 23 Lions were doing to the league. Spaghetti, how say you? I think it's going to be a fantastic game. Uh, I do have the Lions winning. I do have the Lions covering as well. Uh, I think it will be a late cover. I think the Cardinals will be in this game because they're the team that it just, I, you know, I wish they had like one more piece on offense. They had like a Debo or an Alvin Kamara, like a dynamic kind of player. And then I would love this team. Uh, I actually am shocked so far this year that Kyler is not really taking off and running the ball as much as I thought. Like he has like, like uh, less than uh, Jalen Hurts has like over 20 something carries. Kyler only has 10, which is uh, not really what we expected. I, he's more of a pocket passer now, which is another reason why I wish they had more a more dynamic running game than just a, a James Conner. Um, but I, I do think the Lions are the team to be in the NFC North, and I, I think they're going to win this game. Um, but the Cardinals are, are close to being a team that's going to be an actual playoff threat, but not this week. Next up, it's the Chiefs. It's the Falcons. As of, I think, about 2.30 a.m. local time, Kevin Hench. 
now has Darnell Mooney on his fantasy roster. I have the Falcons as the number one seed in the NFC. I am more bullish than I was the last time we spoke because they went into Philly and got that one win that I told you they needed to get out of the first three. Clear sailing after this one with a visit from the Chiefs. You know what? I think the party keeps on going. Falcons right now, plus three and a half. Um, total is 46 and a half. I'm taking the Falcons straight up again, 24 to 23. Kelsey gets on track a little bit. He he knows what the rest of the world does. The offense needs to run through him. He gets a touchdown, plus 130. Kirk goes over 240 and a half pass yards. Look for the alt uh, tab there for the pass yards available. Plus 120 is the payout there if you go that high. Hench, how say you? Well, obviously, if Saquon catches that ball, uh, it's panic time in, in Atlanta. <laughs> but he didn't. And so... It seemed like that last drive, you know, uh, obviously teams talking about preseason and practice and how how rusty are you and how bad do you look? And Cousins couldn't have looked worse week one against that excellent Steelers defense. But that last drive seemed to be like, oh, they're ready for the season to start now. Obviously, Bijan is is a lot to handle. And and it and if Cousins is good, uh the the other the other team's going to be in trouble. The defense, I think, looks excellent for the Falcons. I also like the Falcons to win 27-24. Better get on them to be the number one seed. That ship's sailing and soon. Spaghetti, how say you? I have the Chiefs winning and covering. I, I think they could definitely win this game by more than three and a half points. I think they could be winning this game by a touchdown, even if they're on the, the road here. Rasheed Rice is really becoming an emerging star in this league, and plus the speed of, of Worthy and what he could do in stretch the field, I, I think does you know <clears throat> make life tougher for Jesse Bates, who is a great safety for the Falcons here. I know the the injury to Pacheco will seem like it, it will hurt, but I, I really do think you could put anyone behind you know Mahomes and the Chiefs' offense, and they'll figure it out. And on the other side of the ball. I just don't get what the Falcons are doing in the passing game. When you have Drake London, you have Kyle Pitts. I know the joke about Kyle Pitts, he's never really been used, but he's still a physical specimen. And he, there's a reason why he was a high pick and he's been underutilized. Drake London himself, same thing. I mean, throwing to, you know, Mooney and Ray Ray McLeod uh, when you have those two other weapons doesn't make any sense. bijan has been good, but the Chiefs will lock in, try to stop him. And they're going to win this game. They're going to cover. Something to track here. And when we get to Chargers and Steelers, Joey Porter Jr., as I forecasted, is a racing guy. He erased Drake London. So half of the body of work you're reacting to, Eddie Spaghetti, is against Joey Porter Jr. Two straight weeks now, he has just taken away, erased the number one option that he's going up against. Meantime, let's talk about the Jags and the Bills, shall we? Bills minus five here. Jags desperate to get one. 45 and a half is the total right now. I say the Bills send the Jags home sad. 24 to 21. James Cook over 84 and a half combined Russian receiving yards. Hench, how say you? Uh, same garage, you know, the, the not, Jags keep it close enough to beat that pretty big number, um, but they do not get a victory. I have the Bills winning 27-24. Uh, it's, you know, the Jags are a tough watch right now. I, I think Trevor Lawrence had 16 yards passing at that at the half after they named the stadium after him. You know, I don't know why it's just not... It just looks like it might not be happening for the Golden Boy. And I know, as we've talked about, drafting quarterbacks is such a crapshoot. But if there was ever a guy where I was like, can't miss, that guy was so good, so early, so big, so built for the NFL, and now he's just another guy. Imagine that the last two can't miss. It's a different standard than this is the guy you should take from this QB class. This is... John Elway, Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck proclamations. This guy is definitely going to be a stud. Trevor Lawrence and Bryce Young, two big misses by the scouting community. Uh, Spaghetti, how say you? I th My big mulligan is me buying into the Jaguars and thinking that this revamped offense would be great. I, I didn't I offer you a mulligan. I offered one to Hench. We, we, well, we both need it. I really could use one. Uh, but it, so if, I, if I'm ever gifted a mulligan, it'll be for me buying into the Jags and thinking that Trevor Lawrence turned around. I mean, he his completion percentage is 51%. Uh, ETN has been awful. Like, uh, like throw it at a 3.8 yards per carry under four when everyone in the league is running the ball really well. Um, I, I just, I'm out on this team completely. We keep buying in, uh, so to speak, and, and they just keep uh, underwhelming. And they're going to have to move on from Trevor Lawrence. He is not the generational talent that we thought. And, and plus, I'm sure they're very, very, 
very upset uh, with the you know the draft pick passing on Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, I, I just think this this organization needs a whole you know they got to bring a wrecking ball to it and tear it down. Uh, reversely, I think the the Buffalo Bills obviously they're going to win this game. They're going to cover this game. Josh Allen is a, a total beast. This is like a team that reminds me of my New York Rangers, where you have like the Igor Shosturkin is Josh Allen. He'll carry the team in the regular season, but they're just missing something for the postseason. I, I just don't love the receiving core, and I feel like Josh Allen's playing too much hero ball, and they will ultimately disappoint in the playoffs like my Rangers do. But uh, for now, the Bills could be very happy, and they'll win this game. The thing that's funny with the Jags or interesting about them is the assumption that the AFC South is lousy, save maybe the Texans or the Texans may be slotted above them for most prognosticators going into this season, but also the Colts are not going to be irrelevant. And the Titans, I given the, you know, they've been game at least two times over this season. Oh, and two though they are now. Titans this would be two a- and oh, Titans would be two and oh if Ryan Tannehill was playing quarterback. Like mm-hmm. they, they, they have. Control or how about Mason there. Rudolph? He's going to get it. Mason Rudolph's going to get in there sooner rather than later. If Levis keeps this stuff up spaghetti quickly. Is there any update since we started here on Justin Herbert's availability on the banks of the three rivers? Meantime, trading great quotes, Jim Harbaugh versus Mike Tomlin. I can tell you how the hot dogs made, but you wouldn't want to hear all the ingredients and uh, uh, Harbaugh comparing himself to Moses and all the rest of it. Chargers are a dog going into Pittsburgh, but, a uh, really a a thumbs up from the bookmakers to make them only a one and a half point dog traveling across football America. I guess they traveled up from Carolina where they stayed this week um, instead of the time travel back. Well, not time travel, uh, time change, time zone changes. Either way, I'm blathering the total on this one. 35 and a half egad. You know what I think is going to happen here? I think Jalen Warren's going to go over 40 yards rushing. It pays out if he does. Listen to this. Plus 235. Jalen Warren's been known to snap off one 40-yard rush. I say the Steelers get this 120 to 19. Hench, I'll say you. Uh, as low as that number is, I like it under. I like I like the Steelers to win this game 17 13. Uh e- e- assuming Herbert plays, I don't I don't think it matters. The Steelers defense. It's funny. All summer you told us how good the Steelers defense is. And then you gacked it and Spaghetti and I picked them to go to the playoffs. And you're mm-hmm. the only one in this garage who didn't pick the Steelers to go to the playoffs. And uh, I bet you wish you could take that back as they move to 3-0 and this week. I don't know why you needed to call me out there. That had nothing to do with anything. And also well, your happen. analysis, it's your analysis just included, weeks. it doesn't matter if Justin Herbert plays. You don't think the game goes differently if Herbert's in there? I just think the Steelers win and cover it, even if he's in there. Well, I'll tell you this much. You're right about this. If I am right about Joey Porter Jr., Quinton Johnson is there. Tar- I mean, Lad McConkey is emerging here, but Johnson is the difference maker in stretching mm-hmm. the defense and opening things up. If you assume Joey Porter Jr. can eliminate him, well, now again, the defense is in a favorable spot over 60 minutes. Spaghetti, how say you? Definitely right about that. Quinn Johnson, his best game was a pro last week. Um, I, I, the quick Justin Herbert update is, you know, Harbaugh was pretty, uh, like, you know, he thought he was going to play earlier on in this week, but Herbert didn't practice yesterday. Uh, that's been the latest three. He's doubtful. Uh, I saw a report from three hours ago. So uh, if Justin Herbert does not play in this game, it's going to be a bloodbath. And, and I had the Steelers winning and covering even before this Justin Herbert injury news, but I feel like if your quarterback is not practicing on a Wednesday, uh, it's not looking good and my only gripe uh really with the Steelers is you Dave for still thinking that throwing one touchdown pass in two games is good enough for Justin Fields this is a perfect game for Russell Wilson to play kind of get the cobwebs out of here get the rust off look really good versus a a team without their quarterback win this game because everything else for the Steelers is going exactly how I thought it was going to go I just think while Russell Wilson may not be Russell Wilson of five, seven years ago, he's still a better quarterback than what Justin Fields is doing. That's my only gripe. But uh, yeah, me and Hench are the Steelers fans on this podcast. Actually, All right, that, that's 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 fine. Listen, I'm I'm happy to debate ongoing right now. Russell Wilson, if you see the the video of him at practice, he's not close to being ready yeah, to go. So it's a moot yeah. conversation. And the other thing is, too, for all the Fields versus Russ debate, and I've obviously engaged in it as much as anybody, what should stand out to you when you watch the Steelers offense is what difference is Russell Wilson going to make over Justin Fields when zero of those uh, pass catchers is able to separate? Literally, George Pickens is always open because if you give him a 50-50 ball, he's going to win it 75% of the time. But outside of him, there is no separator 
uh, available to either Fields or Russ, and so we can debate this all we want. It's got it's a limited offense unless they can really uh, beat you up on the ground, which ultimately they're going to be able to do when they have their pieces available there. All right, there is your 15-minute pregame show.